Hello everyone, Arlisha here and welcome to another video. Today I have a painting process to walk you through and this one starts in my sketchbook with a thumbnail. When I have a specific sort of atmosphere or theme that I can see in my head for a painting but I want to make sure that I can get it right. I like to do small thumbnail paintings. I also knew that I wanted to take the time to do this step because I'm using my M. Graham watercolors today. I've had these paints for years and I actually don't use them very often because when I first got them I didn't know as much about watercolors and I usually when I tried them I felt overwhelmed by just their like they're super saturated they're very bold colors and you just get a lot of pigment you get a lot of saturation with a little bit of paint and they were difficult for me to control when I was first getting started or at least when I when I knew less about watercolors and I wasn't as familiar or as comfortable just working with this medium but I wanted to come back to them for this because I knew I wanted bold saturated color that would capture the theme and the emotion that I was going for. Even though I had an idea of how I wanted this painting to feel, the final result ended up quite a bit different than the thumbnail, but I think it's really interesting because I think the thumbnail and the final painting together tell a really interesting story and it almost feels like a progression from the thumbnail to the final piece. So I would love to hear from you in the comments like what you think about each one and how they're different. And you'd think that the purpose of a thumbnail is so that you can just kind of recreate that process and take those same steps again and make sure that you're going to get what you want out of the final painting. And that was definitely my initial objective. But usually when I approach a painting, I just go by feeling and I take it one step at a time. And so this one just ended up different than the thumbnail. I'm still really, really happy with it though. And you can find this original as well as prints for this piece available for sale on my shop. I've really been enjoying lately the process of laying down kind of a heavy wet wash in the beginning of a painting to set tone and atmosphere and to really just get a head start on the color palette that I want for a piece. It used to seem really scary to me to lay down big washes of a color before I had even started like layering in the features and a lot of the forms. But now, I don't know, maybe it's from working with opaque mediums where I would lay down a wash and then build opacity on top of it. I like have a really hard time starting a painting without laying down a wash at first because knocking back the white of the page and kind of adjusting those values right off the start just seems so valuable and so important to me that it's a step that I don't really like to skip anymore. I'm really glad I did the thumbnail first because this pose was very tricky for me. It's something that I've always wanted to tackle, this sort of upward skyward facing face, but it's definitely been very intimidating because it's very easy for the facial features to look squashed or for things to just look off. It's a hard pose to capture anyway and even when you look at photos at the face from this angle it looks a bit strange. So it was definitely a bit of a challenge to balance all of the facial features being in more of a condensed space and taking up less of the page and still trying to make the composition of the painting seem full even though a lot of the focal point details are all in one area. I knew when I did the thumbnail that the painting needed some other element, something else to tie it all together and to give a stronger sense of theme and purpose to the painting. And at this point, while I was working on this section, I still didn't know what that was going to be. I, I had no idea 
how I was going to tie everything together. I took a lot of breaks and it took me a long time even just to get to this point of the painting. And I know the video can make it seem like everything came together so decisively and so quickly, but it took me multiple sessions, like multiple days to finish this painting, not because it took a very long time to paint, but I spent so much time unsure of what to do next and what to work on next. And then it kind of hit me when I was taking a break, I was coming in from the studio to maybe grab lunch or something. And I realized that drawing tears kind of flowing from the eyes down the rest of the head and to the neck would be a great addition to the painting and give some visual interest to the lower sections where you don't have that face. So then I was contemplating, well, what color should the tears be? You could go with like a classic underwater theme and stick with like the blue colors, keep it a bit more monochromatic. Or I could, you know, lean on my favorite like red peachy colors. And then I just I had to think if I wanted, you know, something that could kind of allude to blood in the painting, which I think is a really, really interesting facet sometimes, but I didn't think that it fit the theme I wanted for this piece. And then I was just thinking about like doing a gradient of colors and just doing all of them felt right. So uh, I ended up with just this rainbow of tears and it was really enjoyable to paint this subtle gradient and just create slightly organic shapes that I didn't need to be perfectly symmetrical or to match each other perfectly. And I think it really ties everything together in a way that the piece was missing. And that happens to me a lot where I'm working on a piece and I know, hmm, this is going to need some other element to tie it all together. It's going to need something. And I'm not quite sure what that is until I do it, until it's just happening and then I'm working on it. It was also very similar with the hair on this piece. My original intention was to leave out lighter strands on both sides and then while I was working for some reason I only did it on the one side. But it was nice to get to add um, contrasting values for the hair and I, I feel like I work just kind of based on instinct when I'm painting. So even when I do my thumbnail, even when I have a plan and a concept and an idea, when it comes to actually working on the final piece, a lot of that can just kind of go out the window and I'm gonna approach this painting like its own separate thing. But even still, the thumbnail was really, really helpful to put together because it helped me to solidify the pose. And it also helped me to not be afraid of putting down those initial bold washes of color and also the later darker values down at the bottom because I knew what that looked like and I knew that it was going to work so I didn't have to be afraid of doing that. And I think that's kind of one of the biggest points of value in doing thumbnails is it makes the final painting less scary because you've kind of already taken that leap on a smaller scale. And I like to limit my thumbnails in some way so that I can't make them too perfect. The one I did for this painting was kind of the biggest I ever want to go with a thumbnail. It was actually larger than a lot of my thumbnails are, but I limited myself by doing the sketch with a ballpoint pen instead of a pencil because I didn't want to stress too much about the details for the thumbnail. I wanted to just capture the feeling. And to be completely honest, if I had spent more time on the thumbnail, I, I may have like kind of completed the idea in the sketchbook and gone, okay, this is good. I don't, I don't, I don't feel like I need to do the final painting anymore. <laughs> and I really didn't want to miss out on you know, making this piece and finishing it. This piece was actually something that I started after not necessarily a failed painting, but I spent literally like a month working on a painting and then realized that it wasn't going to be finished, that I just wasn't connecting with it anymore. I had spent so many tiny little sessions trying to bring it together and it just wasn't happening. So it was kind of disappointing coming out of that experience. And as I approached this next painting, I wanted to simplify the concept and just 
create something that I knew I would see through to the end. So the thumbnail was really helpful for that. And who knows, I did record the process for the other quote unquote failed painting. So if you would like to see that and hear more about that process, I still really love the concept. And I'd love to, I don't know, either finish the one I started or start fresh with the idea sometime soon. I think that would be fun. Something I did at the end of this painting that I basically never do was I decided that the droplets near the bottom of the page were too dark and I thought they distracted from the face and I wanted to have less contrast in that area so that the face wouldn't feel like it was competing with these other dark values at the bottom of the page. So I just scrubbed at them and because there was a lot of that blue already down at the bottom, I um, wasn't too concerned about adding more blue. I felt like it would just add to this feeling of depth. And I just scrubbed at them and then gently wiped away with my, with my towel and it worked well enough. So I'm really happy with how this painting turned out. I think that the painting, the thumbnail to the final painting tells a bit of a story. And my patrons were very kind in helping me name this piece. So thank you to them. And of course, thank you to all of you for watching this video. Again, this available is for sale on my shop. You can find prints available there as well. And a huge thank you to my patrons and members here on YouTube for your support. I'm incredibly grateful for all of you and to just everyone who's watching this video. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.